And we're singing. We're singing. Dun, dun, we're singing. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Mick. What? Did you hear <clears throat> the American public have band together again? They have all joined in to vote. Well, first of all, that's kind of an integral part of our country and democracy. So I've heard that many times. No, no, no. This is the most important election. Oh, okay. Well, Morgie, you're about two years late. And I'm a little upset because I've been living in hell for two years. And you're just now realizing... Oh. That we made a very large mistake. No, 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 Mickey, Mickey, Mickey. What? They made a new choice. They made a choice oh. that is a real Sophie's choice. Oh. Yeah. I don't feel optimistic based on what I know about the American voting public. What is the number one great American read of all time? Oh, well, it's probably the first time I looked at you and said, that hair's a wig. First of all, if we voted on that unanimously, people would say my hair wig looks good. And second of all, actually, Joe said that. I have to give Joe props <laughs> to that great American the read. The wig joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, no, what do you mean great American read? What the fuck's that? All right, so we're here today to chat about, discuss, and review PBS's Great American Read, which is a quest that they went on to discover what are the top books that people love in America. Mm. Ratings from 1 to 100 based on votes from the American public. So welcome back to another episode of Beauty and the Bitch. I'm Morgan. And I'm the beauty. I can't. Every time Every I go time. first, well, I can't believe I do would that. Would you not take the shot? Next time I'm just going to stand here and wait for you. <laughs> wait for me. <laughs> I, my name's Mick. Yeah, he's Mick. I'm Morgan. No one's pretty and we're both bitchy. <laughs> <laughs> And it's raining. It is raining. It's raining in paradise. It's like hella winter today. I cannot. I know. I Well, I'm glad to be able to pull out all my fur muffs because I have so many muffs. Your mummy muffs? My mummy muffs. Uh, you might call me you something of a off? muff diver. <laughs> Some that's people what people say, say about you. That's, that's the number why one way. When we started dating, I was like, this guy, that's a regular muff diver right Look there. Look at all his muffs. Look at how many muffs he has. He's definitely getting it with women. <laughs> <laughs> and my friend said, but what about his leather trench coat? And I said, don't look at that. And they were like, what about all his gay porn? And I was like, don't you look at that. How did they find that? Well, you know, it's hindsight. Okay. Yeah. Well, because I hit it really well. It was under my mattress. That's where no one ever You was. put it in between the the covers of like harry potter yep yep because i'm very no i use the bible obviously well, yeah duh. oh my god That's the lord's work yeah <laughs> lord bless these cocks <laughs> that's sacrilegious well who isn't yeah that's i mean the truth. we are for sure i mean you are for sure i'm blessed i claim it i'm literally wearing he, a mary blanket right now literally wrapped in a virgin mary blanket and there's yes. like no less than 10 virgin marys all around us yes and her glory protects me displayed thank you there's also Tastefully. an angel you see that evil angel over there yeah i love that evil angel yeah it's scary i don't know why i like angels you know what i'll tell you why actually all these religious figures is because religion has perverted all the kindness and love in those mm -hmm. and so what i'm really mm -hmm. doing is like reclaiming them and queering them like as that. well yeah, yeah. Oh, it feels definitely. necessary it feels like i have to because otherwise i have to say goodbye to the whole shebangle and i can't do that but you know what no one can get behind universally what those naked cherubs no Those yeah little naked chips. no i don't I'm like that at it. all no they're creepy like don't buy me one uh -uh. don't bring it up what if i brought you two well then they could be together in the dumpster what? where i will throw them they're trash sacrilegious you know what's not trash though what? really fucking good books that's true but there are some trash books on this list all right first of all we're going to have to come to an understanding to agree to disagree. <laughs> About what? On some of these factors. I'm not coming for Outlander. I'm telling you right off the bat. Great, that's, then we'll probably I be I do we'll think it's shocking it's at number two, <laughs> but I'm not coming for it. I knew that's what you were coming for. I could see you bowing up to protect Outlander. Well, the thing is, is it's like, because uh, this is just the fucking broken democracy system that we live in, but it's based on people who care enough to get out and vote yep. and like the fans showed up yeah the fans came out for 50 shades of gray yep. 50 shades of gray made the top hundy list yep. whereas like i think chronicles of narnia is not even on here it it is but it's pretty low so it's like low. It, it's just a matter it's like 
The, there are so many things about this list that are interesting. Like, I don't even know where to start. Do we want to start with, like, the top five and then, like... Well, okay. How about this first? So, The Great American Read happened in 2017, right? And it, it's a PBS, like, eight-part TV series. But it just ended, like, in 2018. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I meant 2018, yeah, yeah. not 2017. We have Forget no idea what year it is. <laughs> no, I'm lost and confused. I can't believe it's 2019, but we don't even have to get into that. Right Girl. Now. Um... And uh, it's inspired by uh, an English series that did this a decade ago. Okay. Have you like, heard about that? No, like oh, in England they did a similar thing? Mm-hmm, like okay. Great um, English Read or whatever. It's like the <laughs> same thing, but they it. replaced America with English. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, they did it first, so uh, yeah, we replaced we it. We copied it. It's just like Skins. We, we did it just like we did the American Revolution. We took yep. your shit and we made it better. Oh, Yo, shots fired. Just kidding. We love tea time, but we hate royalty. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know why. I also don't like English cuisine very much, but you that's neither like here nor there. You baked beans with your breakfast? Um, maybe one time, not every day. <laughs> I also don't like, they like slabs of tomato there. Have you noticed that? Yeah. They, and I like tomatoes, but I just, I don't know, man. I'm not into it, you know? I like tomatoes. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I also have no problem with royalty. So, yeah, I don't really like royalty either. But, um, okay, so, but here's what's going to blow you away. Okay. Tell me. The results of the English. Exactly Greek. the same. <laughs> no. Well, actually not too far off. Their number one, we're both going to love, was Lord of the Rings. Oh, tight. Mm-hmm. Look at them turning out. And their number two, which Lord of the Rings was number five in America. Yes. No, it was I like so. number, I think number, f- okay, maybe you're right. Maybe so. I'll pull up my list. I mean, I won't swear to it. I'm not saying if I'm, if I'm saying right, you're you wrong. just gave up your life. I'm not, I'm not saying you just bet me your car and now I own a car. Oh! It's yeah. got four years left on the car payment. Oh, never mind. <laughs> um, well, we think, okay, so it was, at least Lord of the Rings was high, but it wasn't number one. Sorry, I didn't have my list ready, but go on. Okay. And then Pride and Prejudice was number two, which, if if my notes are correct, is number four here in America. Was number four. Am I crazy, though? <clears throat> is it somehow wrong? I have... Yes, you were right, right, right on both counts. Oh, yes. Say that again. You said right three times, but I can't ever get enough of that. You were right wing. What? (laughs) That was the sound bit for everyone. Oh, no. is right wing. I do like Ayn Rand, and one of her books is on here. But um, no, I'm not right wing, Morgan. Now I'm burning down your car. Oh, my God. Yeah. But I have four years left to pay for it. Well, (laughs) bitches. Well, right wing nuts do. So true. Um, Okay, so... How many of these, Morgie, this list of 100, how many have you read? This is upsetting for a number of reasons, but mostly only because you have definitely read more. <laughs> I sorted this list and picked out all the ones I have read, and I have only read 40 of the top 100. But some of them are series. Uh-huh, exactly. Several of them are series. Yes, and those are all counted as one entry. Just which is counted as crazy. one entry. I mean, Harry Potter is number three. But I mean, if we huge. get into like a pissing match of which which Potter book belongs on the top, I mean like... It's gotta be number four. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely number three. <gasps> um yes and and you're you're right you're also correct morgan that Mm. i've read more than you okay so 40 is like (laughs) but percentage wise it's an f minus it's not great but 40 i read 40 plus books from the greatest books according to american public and libraries well the most country popular exactly yeah it's not like they're like that's a big diff well and I have feelings about that, too. But, yeah, they're just, like, the most popular books. So, like, I feel good about reading 40 of the most popular books. Yeah. I'd like to read more. There's a ton of books on this list that I'm, I'm like, I need to get to this. Well, and to be very fair, I remember when you were locked in that bunker for that decade and a half, I know that all you had was Pride and Prejudice. And you reread that, like, like what, 25, 30 times? Unbreakable. She <laughs> loves Darcy. <laughs> Do you remember when I used to think that they were saying, <laughs> these girls have strong ass hair? Do you remember? <laughs> yeah. Because what was it? What's strong the as hell. Yeah. And I thought, and that show Unbreakable, because I thought they sat in the bunker and brushed their hair all day, which makes it stronger. Well, that's what I did in the bunker. <laughs> yeah. See? And that's why your wig's so lovely. It looks fantastic. Our wig is lovely. But I ripped all my hair out of the hairbrush in the bunker, so I had to get a wig. So. Okay. It's well, a win-lose uh, situation, really. No story is just happy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so no, I think 40 is impressive. Yes, it's true. I did read 48. Whoa. Which is eight Shots more. Fired. <laughs> eight more than you read. But, and, and you know what, though? As far as that series thing, um, I have to tell you, 
what's it called is on Wheel here. Of time. The Wheel of Time is on here, and it is one entry. And y'all know that's fourteen big ass books. It. I've seen people like online be like. Oh, I've been reading for a decade and I finally finished. It was great. And I'm like, yeah, that should be more than one entry. You should give me all the points. It's It's like, so I've read The Eye of the World like twice. Uh And then I read whatever the second one is like once. I don't remember. I'm not going to pretend. A Storm of Swords? Or is that a different series? I think it's Storm of Swords, but uh, no, no, no. It's, It's something about a horn. Hunter's. Winter. Winter's horn. It's called Winter's Horn. Wonderful. Um, and I, like, have been building my collection of Wheel of Time books through the thrift store when I, like, find one to, like, piece in. Oh, sure. And, like, before I fucking die, I'm going to read The this. Great Hunt. That's why it's called. I'm sorry. Yeah. The Great Hunt. Yes. Before I fucking die, it's going to get done. But I'm going to be that girl who takes 10 years to do it. And you should. It's an amazing, magnificent work of art. One of the best series ever written. And I'm actually surprised it's not higher on the list. Well, I can't even find again, it right it's now. the fans. Yeah. The fans of that Neutral. thing just aren't necessarily, they don't cross over with, like, the PBS, like, let me text a vote to you genre. You exactly. know what I mean? It's like a very specific sort of people that, like, do this. Like, like I knew about this. I didn't super follow it, but, like, knew that it existed, and I watched the final episode where they revealed the top five. Uh-huh. And I didn't vote. Mm. And I love books. Like, I got mad love for my favorite And books. you were even... Part of this time, weren't you working at, yeah. like, a literary yeah, company? Yeah, I was doing, and, like, like focusing a Focusing on, like, publishing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, like, fully didn't do it and feel like... I feel okay about the results, but, like, what if I could have made a difference? I, um, okay, by the way, Wheel of Time is number 62 out of 100. Wow. Um, yeah, well, and here's the thing to remember, Morgie, your vote wouldn't have mattered. Game of Thrones at 48. Shocking. Shocking how low that is. But you're right, that's indicative of the audience here. But then, okay, we haven't even told them. Would you like to give the top 10, just so they have an idea of why we're kind of befuddled right now? Sure, sure. Oh, um, okay, We'll or count what? it down. Da- or uh, you want to count? We'll down? start at ten. Yes, or, okay. or wherever you want to start. I mean, you be yourself. Number I, ten of the Great American Read, Jane Eyre, classic literary mm-hmm. sort of like most people read it in high school. Some people love it. More people hate it. Is that with Heathcliff? Yes. Okay, and is there somebody locked in attic? Yes, his okay. wife. <laughs> okay. Oh, it is her. Okay. Oh my God! Uh, spoilers. spoilers. Oh, well, Well, fuck that's, y'all. like, the whole point of the book. Well, oh, god damn shit. it. Sorry. Well, if you didn't read Jane Eyre in high school, you're not getting to it now. Honey, and if somehow you missed the spoilers, I ain't ever read it, and I knew what the fuck happened. Also, like, I... I... No. Oh, my God. Is that Wuthering Heights? No. Oh, good. Now it's not a spoiler, because we legit don't know. I don't remember. Wait. I know someone opens a shop in one of them. Jane Eyre is definitely... He has his wife locked in the attic. But is his name Heathcliff, or is that the guy's name from Wuthering Heights? Honestly, Jane Eyre and Wuthering Heights I liked, but they're no Jane Austen, so I I, I haven't read them multiple times. I feel times. you on that. I feel you on that. I'm, Shit, oh my god. Should I look it up, or should we leave? Because we did just spoil it. Actually, we don't fucking know. That could be a fucking, I don't know, Chinese folktale girl. I don't know. Oh, that attic thing was real. Do you want me a, well, it's real in one of them. Do you want me a, oh, okay, I see. Oh, so you're saying, no, we're just, oh, we've already spoiled. I don't so know spoiling. which story Heathcliff is from. Heath, I know oh, the Heathcliff attic. is from Wuthering Heights. Good yes. job, Morgan. Yeah. Um, oh, wait. Yes. His name is like John, or I don't know. He's like the guy, she comes in to be the governor, governess, governess. Yeah. And then like, he secretly has his wife left in the attic. Whatever. Jane Eyre okay. coming in at number 10. And, and we've. You've read it. I have not read it. Mm-hmm. Or I think I read like a comic version. You know where there's like sure. great illustrated yeah. things? Eh, it never would have been on my list, but that I get it. It's fine. It like makes, it's one of those books where I'm like, it made this list because it's like an obligatory thing. Like mm-hmm. to me, like a sure, maybe it's somebody's favorite book, but to me it's one of those obligatory reads where it's like I like Jane Eyre because I'm smart and I like literature you know Mm -hmm. what I mean Mm -hmm. which like people probably think that people who like Pride and Prejudice are that way but I'm not that I like it for all the sexual tension and the comedy so I'm different you are different you're special you're unique Uh, so I'm Jane Eyre is one of those things where I'm like, really, Jane Eyre's your favorite book? Mm-hmm. Really? And maybe if a certain person says that, I might be like, okay, I see you. Sure, it makes sense for somebody you know, out but, there. But uh, to be number 10 mm. is people's... Uh, you know what? I read this um, quote by a librarian who was talking about this list, mm-hmm. and I think it really encapsulates what we're saying. 
Um, this librarian said, this is just a basic popularity contest. It's a somewhat uneasy mashup of very recent popular fiction. Uh, Ready Player One. Uh-huh. And the books people remember reading in high school. And I do think The it, number one slot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, which we, yeah, when we get there, you'll be like, yeah, girl, of course. It's um, like not shocking, but also like, okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's going to be a theme. Is like, is it new and popular and like maybe kind of trashy? No offense. Or, (laughs) (laughs) you're really trying to toe the line there. Or, is it like a classic classic that you read three fourths of once and got to be on the paper? You know? Okay, we're ready for number number nine. Jane Eyre, exactly. (laughs) She falls into that category. (laughs) Okay, number nine. Oh, should I do it? Uh, Yeah, yeah, let's take it. Okay, you want to just switch off? Okay, okay, okay. Number nine. The Chronicles of Narnia! Right. The whole series by C.S. Lewis. Yeah, the whole shebang. To me, this kind of feels both of those sort of things because mm-hmm. it's like nostalgic fantasy, mm-hmm. like childhood. It's like the things childhood is made out of, mm-hmm. but also like it's so classic that it belongs here. I agree. This is one of the ones I saw. I was like, yeah, girl. I mean, not just because I happen to have loved it as a child. I'm still a fan today, but... It, it's like it's a part of culture of like yeah. international culture it's like embedded it's like the bedrock yes. of like so, so much like children's fantasy like oh yeah honestly. oh yeah, yeah it's huge it's huge and most people have read at least the line the witch or at least know like what it's about yeah or yeah. they've seen the movies yeah. or the various tv adaptations or mm-hmm. etc mm-hmm. okay so I, i'm at peace with that one personally sure. i probably would have ooped it maybe one or two spots if i was the lone decider but like i'm cool with it i'm cool with that life yeah yeah, I can feel that. You're into that life? Okay. Coming in at number eight, Little Women. Mm. I was sort of interested to see this in the top ten because it, to me it is a classic sort of coming of age story for like women before mm. like feminism was like a huge theme in literature. Sure. Um, but I don't personally, I, I couldn't name one person that's like, Little Women's one of my favorite books. You know what I mean? I have, well, I do know what you mean. Uh, my friends Allie and Jessamine, they love the movie. You know that mm-hmm. movie? It came out in like the 90s, I guess. Winona Ryder. Yes, mm-hmm. they adore that movie. It's a good one. It's all right. Um, <laughs> uh, I read the book when I was a kid. It Maybe because I wasn't a little woman, it didn't like touch me deeply. Yeah. It, I don't remember much about it. I also think if you have like a sister, it has like a special place mm. in your heart. Like I... I think fondly of Little Woman. I don't know if I will ever reread that book. Like, mm. I don't personally think it has great rereadability. But there's actually a mini series coming up. I can't remember if it's on Netflix or Amazon. Um, but really? it's being made into, like, a pretty high-profile, like, mini series. Um, and I can't oh, wait shit. to watch it. I think it's going to be really good. Yeah, that's yeah. exciting. But I'll I probably put, won't I'll give it a shot. read it, you know. Yeah, I no. There are too many other books in the world. Even other yes. books on this list I haven't read before I'm going to pick so up. So many. Yeah. yeah. We haven't read half this fucking list. Girl. Okay, number seven, Charlotte's Web, E.B. White. That's a good choice, I think. What do you think? Oh, you don't look pleased. It's just interesting, like, the children and YA books that have made it to the list. Like, mm. I guess Charlotte's Web is, like, probably one of the great, like, a, one of the most classic children's books. So, like, mm. I guess it's better that it's that. But, like, I, again, it's just, like. What what people are texting and going online to like say that this is their favorite book? Yeah, like like more people than Chronicles of Narnia That's were like shocking. Charlotte's Web, yes. y'all. That you know, and the, I think you hit the nail on the head with that because it's like I like Charlotte's Web. I remember reading it as a child. I couldn't go to bed. I stayed up all night reading it. I loved it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I also really remember that animated movie. Yeah, me too. You know, oh, it was so cute. Really good. And like so the rat and his little adventures. And he's like, anyway. And that web, like gleaming. Girl, the way they did a little sparkle. She said, good pig. <laughs> <laughs> good pig right there. Um, <clears throat> but I'm with you. Uh, above the Chronicles of Narnia. Above, we didn't talk about this because it's not in the top 10, but like above Anne of Green Gables. Above the Great Gatsby, you have Charlotte's Web. I never I'm read Anne of Green Gables. That's one of the things that are not checked. Oh, really? I don't oh, know how. It's quite good. I, I don't know how. I liked it. It made me cry a lot. It's very sweet. Yeah, you're right. Great Gatsby coming in at 15. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm not coming for Charlotte sure. or her web, but I just, yeah, I just wouldn't have expected it. 
But it is like when I have kids, like definitely a book on my like oh, yes. they have to read list. Must read. Like it yeah. will be in their a library. A strong female protagonist for no other reason. Yeah. I mean, E.B. White wrote this like what? Back in the... The day day. The 40s maybe? Or Dang. 50s? Yes. Oh. That's, you were just born. You were just oh. a little baby. <laughs> oh, I've tasted my own medicine. It's a bitter medicine. Wow. You old. <clears throat> Uh, is it my turn? It Coming is. in at number six, Gone with the Wind. Oh, also Margaret Mitchell. Also noticeably unchecked on my list of books I have read. I have not picked up that bad boy. I'll tell you what. I've read half of it, but I counted it. Uh, oh, that's fine. Of, okay. I'm fine with Because that. I got bored. Oh, I counted but, Dune. Oh, yeah, yeah. You did not finish Dune. I counted Dune, too, and I read yeah. maybe, maybe two-thirds. Yeah. Like, at best. I did like plenty, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you did enough to say nope. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. <clears throat> it's a long book though, right? Gone with the Wind. Yes, yeah, huge. Big I, think book. I think it's staring down at us. It's somewhere in here. I've like I own seen it, it but... before and been like, mm, I can't. Oh, it's thick. And and also, I mean, I'm not coming for Margaret Mitchell, but it's kind of pulp fiction-y. Like sure. it's not, I don't, mm, I don't think the writing is good enough for it to be as classic as it is, which Jeez. I'm sure people will like. It, if it now. wasn't made into like the famous movie that's no known I don't and think loved, so. you don't think it would be there? I don't think so. No, Which is interesting because it also like, um, but like having uh, uh, um, adaptations of books is such a big part of pop culture. Like, sure. I mean, it has been for a while, but like, it has created like a behemoth out of this story. Yes, like it has lived on, and it's like still obviously really well revered and Mm -hmm. like it's a thing and maybe it wouldn't be without that movie i mean you know i I 100 percent agree with you about that and that's really fascinating could be its own episode really maybe we should like books that would have been forgotten if not for (gasps) that's a really good would you yes i think that's a great idea um now if i had that idea instead of you morgan would you be emailing yourself i think we did it together okay i'll take it you're right it was my (laughs) It was my idea all along. No, um, but here's what's interesting to me about Gone with the Wind being number six is the racial over and undertones Mm, in mm. this book. Now, this was a part of history, and I am certainly not one of those people who believe in erasing history because I think we're just going to make the same mistakes again. But... I don't know. I just thought the 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 wide ranging use of the N word, if nothing else, might have dropped it down a little further. And this is something we will return to with our number one. Yeah. But I mean, I know the N word doesn't make a work of art not a good work of art. But just in today's culture, I just thought there'd be more blowback or pushback against something that is so sympathetic to the South during the Civil War, and so obviously written with the idea that black people being in the background are only servants and slapped around is fine. You know what I mean? What if, do you think it's possible in this climate that like people came out to vote for that, to make sure it was on the list maybe. to like sort of make a statement. I'm I not mean, saying maybe. that's what happened, but like, isn't that a possibility? Well, I will tell you, I think it's a, certainly a possibility because racists be crazy. <laughs> Um, but <laughs> that's our, our tagline. I mean, right. Beauty of the bitch races be crazy. I mean, hello, goodbye. <laughs> they crazy. Um, I will tell you, this is the first book, except for maybe my mom might say the Chronicles of Narnia is one of her tops. But I had a friend, have a friend who lives in Chicago, who is in love with Gone with the Wind, the book specifically, and she's from Chicago. I mean, she's not even a southerner. Who? You don't know her. Oh. We we worked together oh. back in the day. She your Canadian girlfriend? <laughs> She's my Canadian girl. My girlfriend who lives in Canada. I love it. Um, interesting. So she likes it even without the southern. She does. Yeah, she loves um, uh, Scarlet just as a strong, flawed but strong woman. Which she is made fair. that dress out of those curtains, though. Girl, have you ever tried to make a dress out of blinds? It's That's hard. All I got. <laughs> you can make a bikini, maybe. You might could. <laughs> Okay, number five. Wait, it's my turn, right? Yes. Okay, good. I knew that. I was, I was just checking. <clears throat> now I'm dying. You killed me. Number five, The Lord of the Rings. Ding, 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 yes. ding, 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 ding. Whole series, whole series. Interesting to me, the it, now, The Hobbit's not part of that, so The no. Hobbit doesn't feature at all. I, okay, I don't know who voted for this, because again, not me, but like- a Four lo- million people in America, but that's all we know. A lot of people think of The Hobbit as part of Lord of the Rings, so maybe like 
in the minds of like the people they were just like that's a package deal Mm -hmm. you know what i mean Mm -hmm. but what about farmer ham or whoever you know i'm talking about Farmer maggot yeah what'd you call me wait (laughs) what did you call me (laughs) (laughs) i'm offended oh you can't talk to nobody (laughs) about (laughs) nothing these days you can't even tell him you love god with the wind no more you can't even mention farmer maggot to a gay man (laughs) what did you call me again but really, Farmer Maggot is like an an ill named person that makes me think of like maggots, obviously. Yeah, it's gross. But he's like, like farming food. I yeah. don't like it. It's like a short story. But or he something. was there. Yeah, he's he in there a too. Rat. <laughs> well, I did read that they would only allow one book from each author as a way to kind of. Mm-hmm. Oh. So maybe The Hobbit did get a bunch of votes, but Lord of the Rings got more. And maybe Farmer oh. Maggot got the most votes, and they said, "Girl, we can't put that on a list." All these gay men will be like, what you call me? <laughs> All of these gay men, the four million people in America who yeah, did vote. Exactly. The gay population. <laughs> um, yeah, Lord of the Rings, we love it. We honor it. It definitely belongs in the top five. Not mad, super happy. I'm pretty into it. I mean, there are some higher ones I maybe would knock down to make room for it. Sure, sure. That was shade, but y'all couldn't see. That's it was fine. Shade. I mean. But it's actually shade against number one, but we're just not there yet. Yeah, but we all know. How we feel about Lord of the Rings. Oh, sure. Because if you didn't catch our previous podcast episodes on the Lord of the Rings, you is missing out. Yes. There are, what, six now? One for each of the Lord of the Rings books. Oh, and and, the Shitty Hobbit movies. And three for the Shitty Hobbit movies. Slash the Hobbit book. We did three unnecessary podcast episodes to discuss the unnecessary films that were created. It was something of a cash grab. Um... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we got paid a big bucks. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I feel like our Lord of the Rings episodes are really strong, even though we did them pretty early on in our podcasting, mm-hmm. because it was, first of all, back in the time when we put so much effort into research God, and preparation. Hours. Probably 10 hours per episode, genuinely. Also, we wouldn't have had to actually do too much because we just intrinsically have a lot of knowledge about it because Mm -hmm. we are both obsessed. And plus, all of our opinions are correct. Yeah, and we're the only right people. Yes! (laughs) Yeah, so if you just want to know more and like learn some secret histories, um, there's so much information in those. So check those out. Yeah, y'all. Check it out. Year and a half ago. Coming in at number four, Pride and Prejudice. You would like Prejudice. I would, and I do, and Races Mr. Darcy can get it. Oh, he had, Mr. Darcy's fuckable. I'll yeah. give you that. Oh, big, um, big time. I don't think, I think the only way I've read Pride and Prejudice is, again, in one of those, like, comic book. Mm-hmm. I had a bunch of those as a kid, and thank goodness, because yeah, they did give me a lot of awareness. Um, what is it that you love? I, I know it's Mr. Darcy. Mm-hmm. You said it's sex. So there's not Sell it to me. sex. There's sexual... <laughs> tension because it's such a in the time of jane austen it was not proper for women to write Mm. writing was not a career for women women were not allowed to have careers or opinions Mm. and jane austen said she's not the one and she did it and she Mm -hmm. did it anyways against Mm. like the wishes of people and uh, when she originally published, she published under, like, a man's name and then, like, later, like, changed her mind and fixed that or whatever. She, like, retconned that and was like, no, it was me, mm. which I respect. Yeah, me too. And um, it, it was really hard for her to do the thing that she loved, and she chose to do it anyways. And in doing that, she sacrificed a lot along the way. Like, to become Jane Austen, mm. she couldn't live this, like, normal life that women live. Like, she had to sacrifice a lot in, like, um... What's that Georgian culture? Like, whatever that time in England was. I think it was, like, Mm. the Georgian period. So, like, she had to really sacrifice to make these books. And so she put everything that she had into it. And I think Pride and Prejudice is the pinnacle of the best thing that she has Mm. written. I have read, like, every book except for, like... There was, like, one they published posthumously that I never read, and I can't remember what it's called. And there might be, like, one other one. She only wrote, like, six books. Ooh, but I'm like, going to look it up. I'm going to look it they're up. They're all very good. Uh, Pride and Prejudice is, like, the epitome of, like, an inside look at, like, life for um, a family in the Georgian era or whatever era they lived in when women – struggled with who they were supposed to be and like who they actually were and so elizabeth bennett the main character in pride and prejudice Mm -hmm. was a woman who was like i will take no less than what i deserve and i will stand for what i want and so like there was a lot of jane austen and elizabeth bennett except that 
she got to write the happy ending for Elizabeth Bennet that she never got to have. You know Aww. what I mean? Like yeah. she she put so much of herself in that, except that she fixed the problems, like the problems that she had in her life. She made them better for her. Mm. And to me, that's such a beautiful like thing about being a writer is like there's so many different ways to like spin a story and like write what you know and put yourself into like your characters. But like it's also a way to get your happy ending Mm. when you don't get it in real life like because literature is like escapism so i think elizabeth bennett is one of the greatest like literary characters and also like Mm. fucking feminist Mm. like she was like i will not marry this person because he's rich i will do what i want i will fuck who i please like i'm Mm. gonna do my thing and she also is really witty Mm. and i feel like she is funny i do remember that i just i feel like I related to, like, that, like, just, like, a witty woman who was, like, whatever. But also, I love a period piece. And you don't mm-hmm. get women like that in, peri- mm-hmm. in, like, period pieces. You don't mm-hmm. get that in Jane Eyre. You don't get that in Wuthering Heights. You mm. only get that in Jane Austen. Preach. You sold that shit, yeah. my friend. Wow. So you love the soul. You oh, love I don't the author. Fuck Mr. Darcy. You love the protagonist. <laughs> you love the love interest. Oh, I love him. Oh, oh wow. girl, I get it with re- Mr. Bingley you too. You really did sell that. Damn, girl. Yeah. Okay, so um, Sense and Sensibility was the first one. Book she wrote. Uh huh. Pride and Prejudice was the second. Nice. Mansfield Park. Uh huh. The third. Emma the fourth. Uh huh. And then the last three were all uh, published after she died. Mm-hmm. Northanger Abbey. Persuasion and Lady Susan. So I read Persuasion, the other, no, Northanger Abbey, and the other one I did not read. Oh, okay. okay. Persuasion was, Persuasion was good. It was fine. It was good? It was yeah, fine. it wasn't as good as the other I ones. have never heard anyone talk about Persuasion. Persuasion, I, I guess it just think, got made into a BBC miniseries. Oh. It might be available to view if you would like to check it out. Not you, you but like you, plural. You people. You yeah. people in the world. Uh, Emma got turned into a good movie with Gwyneth Paltrow. Sense and Sensibility got turned into a fantastic movie with um, Kate Winslet and Emma Thompson. I think I've seen that. That's I'm a good sure one. Uh, Pride and Prejudice, of course, of the course. Colin Firth BBC miniseries, and then remade as a film starring Keira Knightley as a beautiful Elizabeth Bennet. What about Mansfield Park? Uh, that, that's a movie too, isn't it, or a series? Uh, I feel like I've seen it somewhere. Yes, it's Probably a movie they all are starring like this brown-haired girl who looks familiar, but I don't know her name. Okay, and it's <laughs> more boring than the other ones, okay. so I wouldn't super recommend it. Is that I heard that maybe Mansfield Park was like there? It's richer people or something. Yeah, like this girl gets like something she's like not that. like orphaned because she's like an adult, but like mm. you know when you're a woman you have to like live with your family if you're not married. So mm. she had to like go live with like her wealthier family. And, oh, like... oh, Fanny Price. That's yeah, her name. yeah, that's her name. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh yeah, wealthy aunt and uncle. I I've only that's read it cool. once, so I don't like super remember. I mean, but, I'm yeah. sure it's good. I'm sure it has its levels. But if you're but... gonna read, an, if you're only gonna read one, Pride and Prejudice. Pride. Is so the you one. agree. Yeah. Now it's at number four. Do you think it should be higher? Because you definitely love it. I'm fine. I'm you're fine. fine with I feel like putting it in the top ten anywhere is like a nod to like, it's a classic. And it's a thing to read. But it's also one of those obligatory, like, English class books. And honestly, it's not for everyone. Like, when people come for Jane Austen, I'm like, that's fine if you read it and you didn't like it. But I'm really really not fine when when people are like, Jane Austen's stupid, but they, like, have never picked up a Jane Austen book in their life. I'm just like, how do you know, though? That drives me fucking crazy, too. um, Which is why I stuck out with Dune for so long. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) So you could say... In an intelligent and informed way, this book is boring as fuck. I like the sandworms and that is it. I like the spice, but there ain't none for me to have. Mm. Melange. Yes. Okay. Oh, it's my turn. I think. I don't know. It totally is. Num- coming in at number three. The Harry Potter series. Yes. Yeah, it's definitely a top three sort of thing. A uh, worldwide fucking phenomenon. I was surprised it wasn't number one, to be honest I, with you. Honestly, I was too. And like, I watched this last episode and it they counted up from the, you know, five, four, three, two, one. Uh-huh. And when they were like, number three, Harry Potter. And everybody was like, yay. I was like, what could What's possibly? Yeah. I was like, but what other books are there? Like, I was baffled. Um, 
Well, first of all, we haven't mentioned this. These all, all have to be fiction. Uh, there's no nonfiction allowed. Right. Um, but I kind of thought, it sort of depends on how you do it, but I kind of thought the Bible was going to be in here somewhere. I was worried about that. Yeah. I When they got to, like, the last pick, I was like, don't do some dumb shit. Don't do some dumb right, shit. Right, <laughs> right. Don't be the King James right uh... now. But then I think that, you know, it's interesting, because religious people wouldn't vote for it as fiction, many of them. So sure. I guess that's maybe why. Or maybe it was in there, and the librarians were like, nah, queen, we're not doing this. Maybe. I mean, it's Possibly. Or maybe they just excluded it from the beginning to be like, it mm-hmm. does not apply. Or yeah. like, it and all religious texts. I think maybe so, yeah. Except for books written by your Scientologist boy. Oh my god. Wait, is he on this list? Oh, I don't think so, but oh, okay. like, oh. it'd be hilarious if he was though. Oh my god. They would have bought his book. Why can't I remember list. what his name is? Because Howard Johnson. No, that's a hotel chain. Uh, Ron Howard. No, that's a director. Howard... Ron something. Ron Irving. L. No. Ron Hubbard. L. Ron Hubbard. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. Oof. Yeah. We got there. Ya we boy. got there. <laughs> ya boy. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm happy with it. I, I, I thought it would be higher, but certainly it deserves to be in the top five. I mean, no doubt. Well, and honestly, if you want to, I mean, we could talk about Harry Potter forever. And we did. We have. Tune into our yes. past episodes where we cover every single Harry Potter book. Yep. And the Fantastic Beast series uh-huh. that and is And the ongoing. Cursed Child. Oh, yeah, and the Cursed Child. Uh-huh. We've yeah. got one for all of them. And um, if anyone listens to our episodes on YouTube, there is a playlist where you can just do, you can binge all the Harry Bless Potter. You. All the Lord of the Rings. Thank Bless you so much, you. but I didn't sneeze. Yeah, I don't get it. But you're an angel. Oh my God. I think Morgan's planning to kill me. I am. <laughs> um, no, but we, we talk all the Harry Potter stuff. We have every opinion. We love it. Yeah. We think you do too. So you yeah. should check it out. Well, it's number three. Somebody does. Girl. Okay, number two. Now, this is the one. I'm, I'm going to say it without any shade. Number two. Oh, I think we switched at some point. Oh, did we? Do you want to say this one? I'll say number one. That's fine. I think I said Pride and Prejudice, and then I also said Harry Potter. Oh, so you said Harry Potter and Pride and Prejudice? I'm really wow. sorry. I feel like not good. Wow. Why don't you do the last two? No, I, you take this one. I'll do number one. Okay, it's a fair Okay, coming in at number two, a shocking turn of events, Outlander. By Diana Gabaldon. Makes sense to me. Nothing weird there. <laughs> it's not okay. odd. So this is an ongoing series. And I, uh, if you listen to the podcast regularly at all, know am a big fan. We did an episode on it. Uh, season four is underway right now on Stars. It comes out every Sunday. It's fucking lit. They're doing a great job with season four. Their budget is insane. Mm-hmm. The books are just beautiful. I'm on book five right now out of like, I don't know, like nine books. I can't remember. Still ongoing. Mm -hmm. But honestly, (laughs) like it's so interesting. Like it is a, it is one of the best selling book series of all time, Uh but kind of like subtly because it's sort of this interesting niche genre that like mostly appeals to women. Because there's a big romance factor there. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's also like a trashy sort of like fantasy. Like historical. Historical fantasy hybrid. Yeah. It's like a really interesting hybrid of like a bunch of shit. Um, tune into our Outlander episode to learn more. But the fans fucking turned out. They turned out better than Harry Potter fans. That's, I mean, that is shocking. To me, That it's, it's, it's not shocking to me that a current series that is well-loved. And that is, as you say... It really pulls in fans from many different, mm-hmm. like, uh, camps. Cross genres, yeah. Yeah. And, and it, it does it really well. I mean, I haven't read them, but you've told me a lot about it. And it doesn't sound like it's for me, but it doesn't sound like shit. I'm not saying yeah. it's shit. But the fact that it beat out... I mean, look, it beat out Pride and Prejudice. Let's leave, leave Harry Potter out of it for a second. Outlander is more beloved by the American people than Pride and Prejudice. It's more beloved by the American people than 1984. I think that's a bit of a problem. I think we can't leave Harry Potter out of the equation. Well, fair. I thought there was never a thing more... Like, I feel like we will die and there will never be anything more popular in our lives than the Harry Potter franchise. But what about me in general? I'm De- very popular. Definitely. It's nothing My compares always to the up. love for you that people Okay, have. thank you so much. Um, thank you so much. Harry Potter is like an unparalleled success. Yeah. But Diana Gabaldon? Uh-huh. This bitch has some people. I guess so. I mean, like, and I'm one of them, but, yeah. like, it, it was, like, I was shocked when they revealed this. And she walked out on stage, like, on the episode, like, 
She was the only, like, author physically there because, you know, the rest of them were, like, dead as fuck. Mm. Um, But she came out and she looked shocked. Like, she was surprised. Well, it's the only series, okay, not only by a living author, but currently ongoing in the top ten. By the way, J.K. Rowling's alive, obviously, but she is very busy. (laughs) She's still doing other stuff. Uh, Okay, so fair enough. Somehow I just forgot that she's alive. That's upsetting. (laughs) Um, But, like, even looking through the top 20, none of these are series that are ongoing, as far as I can tell. Oh, interesting. There is an Agatha Christie at 19, which someone might still be continuing that series. Sure, but not But she's obviously long dead, so I don't know if that counts. Yeah, no, and, well, and then The Help is number 16, but that's not a series. That's a standalone. The Book Thief, A Tree Goes in Brooklyn. It's the only thing in the top 20 that's an ongoing series. That's crazy. It's. I wonder if that's part of it, too. It's kind of like... It's but got the, that buzz. I don't know, man. It, it's, a, it's This is a conundrum for me. I'm not mad, really, but I am pretty confused. I will say, after I processed it all and, like, considered how it ended up in the top five in the second position like i do get it like as a fan like Mm. it is one of the most well researched well written books that like series that i have read in a long time Mm. and and every like the details in the series are like so thoroughly like thought out like everything is like perfectly placed and like storylines are wrapped up and like Mm. there's like this giant arc just like holding this like everything all together like she is very talented she's she's insanely talented in a different genre but in like the same way that i think of um me brandon sanderson oh okay yeah oh i see i understand very prolific the way he keeps it all the different stories yeah he can just like Uh juggle all that like she can juggle not only, like, multiple time periods of, like, storylines, but, like, the the linear life arcs of, like, characters that are, like, tangentially related. And mm. then four books later, she'll bring something back that was just, like, hinted at in one sentence, like, 7,000 pages ago. Also, mm. these books are, like, prolific. They're all at least 1,000 pages long. Mm. Like, okay. these are, like, hearty Big. things. Book stops. And Door you know, stops. I read, like, a, an interview that she did, and she said um, she knew she wanted to be a writer, and she didn't know where to start, and mm. somebody was, like, somebody gave her advice or something that was, like, you just have to pick, like, one thing that's, like, in your heart that inspires you, and then mm. you just, like, build a thing from that. And she was, like, the only thing that, like, she had that like she couldn't shake was like this vision of like a shirtless scottish man basically (laughs) yeah like a like a like the ideal scottish highlander and like what life would be like for them Hmm. and she was like i don't know it went on but she like basically was like so i wanted to write a story about that but i wasn't like she was like but i didn't know anything about scotland or the history of highlanders which is insane from the details there in this book. She taught her, she like researched and taught herself everything. Mm. And she was like, but I don't want to just write a history book because that's boring. So I was like, what about time travel? (laughs) And she went from there and she just like created this like behemoth thing that's like continuing to go on that has like captured the hearts of millions of people. You know, and you know what? If you hadn't brought Outlander to me as like a topic for discussion... I don't think I would even true. I mean, I that, might no, know about the show, but I never will have watched it probably. Yeah. And that kind of freaks me out, to be honest. That because, it's like the number two thing on the list. Yeah. And yeah. like so many people love it. And I didn't quite miss it. I'm kind of, I've chosen really not to get into it right now, but at some point I probably will read it. But it, it, it makes me feel kind of shitty because like we do this podcast every goddamn week and we're always looking for information and we're always reading and pulling stuff in. I don't know. It's just, it's a big world, I guess. I'm I, glad I have you. I feel like that's I the known. point of it, though, is that, like, yeah. there's too much to consume. So, like, I brought this thing to your attention that I happen to be obsessed with. But, like, you've brought so many things to my attention that I never would have seen, read, or watched. That gonorrhea pamphlet. I could have done without that. A short intro to gonorrhea. You brought me Brandon Sanderson. Oh, sweet. Well, maybe I should read this. It's no. Just a, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, so listen... <laughs> It's not for everyone because I don't want you to read it because I don't like when people, I don't want somebody to do something because it's a thing I love and then be Mm. like, I don't like this. And like, not that you would shit all over it because you wouldn't because you know I love it. But like, 
But there might be a negative air. I just don't want anyone yeah. to do this if it's like not their thing. Yeah. And I just don't think it's, it's your not thing. my thing. Wow. But for well, me and the millions of other women who turned out to vote for this, girl. I would be interested to know that. They don't didn't keep track of like any information, but I would love to know what the like gender breakdown is on all of these books. Like, that would be fascinating. I, I'm telling you right now, Outlander's got to be like 90% women. And maybe so. And good on y'all women. What if it was just Diana Gabaldon like continuously? Yeah, <laughs> but she changed her name slightly over time. So one time she's Dina Gabaldon and one time she's Diana Gabaldoni. They're like, you have a large extended family. <laughs> 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 oh shit so our, so after it's sunk in <laughs> you're okay with Outlander at number two I mean, it's a shock but you're like you're I'm living I'm fine okay. with it because of the like ongoing pop culture aspect of it like uh-huh. like you said like everyone else is like either dead or like old news for like some of these mm-hmm. top series or whatever top 20 but like this is a thing that's like living and breathing and it has like so many goddamn legs like yeah. it it's got this great show. It's got like fucking side stories. It's got comic books coming out. Like it, it has the Game of Thrones effect, but like it's mm. almost doing it better mm. because like she's good at making good on writing the series. And George R. R. Martin has like really like leveled off, as we all know. Mm-hmm. So she's almost, honestly, she's doing it better than he's doing it. Yeah. And like, it, it took her a little longer. Well, no, his came out a long time ago. Actually, hers, hers came out on the night. Outlander was a 90s book, too. Sure, it, t- it took a while to get traction. But anyways, mm-hmm. she's doing fine. I'm okay about it. And still a little surprised. Yeah. Wow. Okay, are we ready for number one? I guess. I guess so. Number one, the best loved book in all of America. Mm-hmm. And by the way... This book stayed at number one for the entire five, five and a half months of voting. It was always number one. It was never not number one. It is To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. I'm not coming for To Kill a Mockingbird. No, I'm not either. Per se. I'm not trying to pull Atticus Finch down into the mud with me. It's a classic. Uh-huh. I think Scout is a great child and a great name. Uh Uh-huh. I do like Boo Radley. He's a sweet character. I like Myrna. I don't care for lynch mobs, but they were there too. Well, I don't like Myrna, but I remember Myrna. Um, I hope that's her name. But is this the most basic thing that you've ever heard in your life? Basic. This is like this is like in sixth grade. This is the book that people that you're you have to read sixth or seventh grade, right? That's about the ring. I don't remember, but yes. maybe eighth grade. Yeah, maybe eighth grade, ninth grade if you went to a bad public school and and no. No tea, no shade there. And, and, and maybe it's the first and last book a lot of people read. Like, when I was looking online, I did see multiple times people were like, well, I'm not a reader, but I read this and I liked it. And I'm like, well, I guess, I mean, that's what it is. It was a popularity contest. If you only know one girl in school, you're going to vote for her to be prom queen, you know? It's also because of, like, the subject matter and how it's still, like, really prescient in society. And, like, it is a timeless storyline like we we do not grow out of this problem of racism Mm -mm, and like uh, there are so many great things about it that like live on and that's why it Mm -hmm. is this like insanely classic book and it's why harper lee didn't want another book published hello goodbye nobody asked for ghost out of watchmen Mm -mm. especially not harper lee Mm -mm. anyway and i refuse to buy or read that by the way yeah same i refuse she was like when you do this there is nowhere to go but down. Like, yep. when you accidentally publish, like, the one of maybe the most popular book in the world, mm-hmm. at least in America. At least in America. And certainly the book of, like, a series of generations. It's been held up again and again as, like, this is important to our cause and this is more the world we want to live in. And sadly, also the world we do live in. But it's also, like, one of those, it's the same thing where it's like, but is To Kill a Mockingbird? Your favorite Is it book? really your favorite? That's what I'm saying. If maybe you've only read five books, it might be your favorite. You know what I mean? I think people voted for it because they felt like they had to. I think so. I think there's recognition there. You know? Um, I think they said, oh, to kill a mockingbird. Oh, yeah, I read that. Mm-hmm. And that was it. Yeah. Honestly. I, it, I can see it being in top ten. I would not. When, for Americans, I do. And I love it. I love to kill a mockingbird. I think it's a fine book. Sure. I really am not coming for it at all. But number one. Most popular? It's so always number one, though. Like, there is no scenario when it is not number one. Like I said, it was number one the entire time voting was open. And that is 
interesting. It's just like it's crazy that like this book was published in, in like what the seventies or sixties. Um, let me. It was published. I'm not certain. Oh, I, when hot it man was again. published. And every no, actually that's not true. It didn't experience um, a lot of traction until uh, paperbacks were made popular. Oh, really? And then because like it just it was expensive and not readily available before paperbacks. Uh, and then when paperbacks were made and they were affordable, then schools started distributing it. Um, I actually wrote a blog about this called the rise. The Rise of Mocking. Man, I had a really good pun yeah, about mockingbirds and book pages, and I don't remember what else. But check it out on my Morgan Esmas blog. <laughs> um, I did it for when I worked at that book thing. Uh-huh. Uh, anyways, but yeah, so it got, it, like, a, it, like, saw, like, a rise in popularity and then, like, never quit rising. Like, it never quit rising. I mean, it won the Pulitzer also. I... I mean, I, it's one of those things. It's like um, I can't really come for it. Yeah, I you guess, can't say you don't like it. No, because I do like it. I just, I, I, I would have. I'm more shocked by T- To Kill a Mockingbird being number one, even than Outlander being number two, because this is a popularity contest. And and like you, I just how many people genuinely go around being inspired and touched by To Kill a Mockingbird on a daily basis. Maybe a lot of them do, but I think we'd live in a better world if they did, to be perfectly... That's another thing. This whole shitty-ass world we live in, all these people love this book, Mm -hmm. and yet they just ignore all the, like, themes and stuff and just go on being hateful yeah I, it's just i i don't know i guess it's 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 almost it's so not shocking that it's shocking does that make any sense it's so expected that it's basic yeah it's basic it's basic it's pumpkin spice lattes it's basic yeah and that's fine i yeah. guess yeah it's, it's just... a it's a cranberry top with high-waisted jeans and a necklace with some relatively beautiful maroon stones in it and some turquoise earrings and some clear... oh my god That's he's what? coming for my fit right now <laughs> morgan looks really cute it's today. called fashion brenda <laughs> oh i'm brenda now okay um i think if when they announced farmer maggot oh you heard you me call? you heard me <laughs> I think if you had asked the people of PBS when they started this initiative, what did they think was going to be the number one book? I think every person at PBS could have said yes. To Kill a Mockingbird. Yes. That's how basic it is. Yes. Though, okay, are there any others that that are lower in the list that you were, like, struck by one way or the other? Because a lot of these, like, like 1984 is number 18. Mm, I can see that. Um, Atlas Shrugged is number 20. Uh, I don't know. I, uh, the I Stand? Kinda... Stephen King's The Stand is number 24. I and was... that is his, his best book? Or like the most popular? Uh, yeah, also shocking. The things that people like best from prolific authors is often like weird. I mean, where's it, frankly? Um, I think it's interesting that The Outsiders was at 32. To mm. me, that's such a like coming of age story that like, yes, I first read in junior high maybe because it was like obligatory english book read Uh but it was also one of the books i was forced to read that i was like dang that book good you know what i mean i was like i'm glad they made me read this um well it's definitely higher on my personal list i'll tell you that and it's you know what it's number 32 and catcher in the rye is number 30 and that's also shocking to me yeah i would have thought that would be way fucking people talk that's another one of those books where it's like people say my favorite book is catcher in the rye and it's like okay girl is it really catcher in the rice oh no i moved it i i also love i mean i'm not saying it's not good no i I hear you coming for me you know what i also like what sorry i don't even know if it's on this list um, I, that same book we were assigned Catcher in the Rye for summer reading uh-huh. in high school or whenever, uh-huh. uh, we were assigned a separate piece. They went oh, to like a sep- boarding I saw school. <laughs> yes, it is on here. It's way lower down. I love a separate piece. I I don't know if I read it before Catcher in the Rye, but like when I got done reading it, I was like, whoa. Yeah. I was like, that book left an impression. Yep. Yep. Um... I, uh, no, A Separate Piece is a book I still own and I kept from our high school days because it is so homoerotic to me. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. If you've never read, it's about two boys at a private school. I'm not going to spoil it, but one of them's very popular and one of them's very not popular, but they somehow have a friendship that maybe is more than a friendship. I don't know what it is about boarding and ends badly. schools. Like, I just, if, if there's like a boarding school involved, I'm like, I I'm like that book it. automatically. Yep. Like, what? 
affliction do I have? I have, like, boarding school love affliction. I mean, like many people, I think we're both kind of fascinated with high school narratives. Like, um, I love mean girl stories of any sort. I love boarding school narratives. I love any of that shit, you know? Um, The Joy Luck Club by Amy Tan is number 42, and that's a fucking amazing book. It's a great book. I guess that's probably people's favorite Amy Tan book. Um, it's not my favorite Amy Tan book. Do you like is the Bonesetter's daughter? I like the Bonesetter's yeah, daughter. So good. Um, she had a couple other ones that I I found like easier to read. The Joy Luck Club is like heavy with like <laughs> the so family difficult. drama. Mm-hmm. Um, family drama is like a genre that is difficult for me for like obvious reasons, mm-hmm. but like Asian family drama is like ingrained like mm-hmm. like they're dramatic about things from like four or cent- like generations ago yeah you know what i mean like At least they're hanging Amy on to that. Work they are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that one was like tough have you ever seen so i read the joy luck club and liked it but have you seen the the movie no oh morgan you I want gotta to. see it. it's so fucking it's, good yeah yeah it, it it'll like make you sob like of a, Asian excellence yes yeah. absolutely yes so so beautiful i've always meant to i just haven't done it um, the Giver's pretty low at 44. Yeah. Pe- people generally like, that's another book. People are like, The Giver's my favorite book. Yeah. I was surprised to see that so low. Um, Game of Thrones, the whole series is number 48. But what? Mo- most of their fans are the TV. Most of their fans that's don't fair. read the books. But I thought just on name recognition alone. Yeah. You know, they're but too I guess... busy swiping right to, to vote. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> War and Peace is number 50. I thought that's one of those books. If this was a critic, I haven't read either. Mm-hmm. If this was a critics list, though, I It'd think that up. would be up at like 15 or something. War and Peace is one of those books where I was like, I feel like I should read that. But then I was also like, but I don't want to. <laughs> you know what, my queen? I don't like Russian literature. And yeah. I've tried all of them. And I've tried multiple times. And it's just not for me. And I make no apologies. Let me tell you. Is Lolita Russian? Yeah. Girl, I read Lolita. And I was like. Mm-mm. <laughs> you read that whole thing, Lolita? Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be really beautifully written, though, right? The yeah, tip of the I guess if you're into that the sort of thing. Dun- oh, you mean pedophilia? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's about a bit more than that. But that being said, you've read it and I haven't, so I will back down on that. Um, yeah, I, I, I just can't do any of it, my queen. That's that's not my life. Um, the Shack by William P. Young. I don't know that one. Is he, I don't know that either. Oh, <laughs> Um, the sun also rises very low. 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 Again, if this was the critics pick. Yeah, that's number sixty-five, and then a separate piece is sixty-seven. 67. Um, the Wheel of Time series sixty-two, by the way, which I think it should be higher, but that's fine. Have you heard of this book at number sixty-six, The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime? I've heard of. It, I've never read it. I remember when it was real popular. I have never seen those words in my life. You haven't? I was like, what is this joke of Maybe. a thing? Uh, what, like a decade ago it came out? Or Lordy, something? I missed that I could that look one. it up. But I don't oh, The like Alchemist coming in pretty low at 70 for a transformative yeah. book that people live their life by. Now, have you read that, The mm-hmm. Alchemist? Yeah. I want to read that. That's on my... It's a short, short read. It's, it's a it's very fiction? small book. Mm-hmm. I thought it was like more of like a self-helpy kind of, I don't know. Uh, you would think that because that's how people, people talk about it like it's a real thing, oh, okay. um, which there's a couple of books that people do that with um Mm. there's this anastasia series that's like a transformative metaphysical journey about anastasia like the russian the ringing cedars yes the ringing cedar series yeah yes i always you told me about that years ago and i always keep an eye out for it people talk about that book like it's real life too oh okay so it's one of those where they they they're touched by it (sighs) yeah the alchemist is beautiful uh translation is a little choppy at times Mm. um from Spanish, I believe, or maybe from Portuguese. I'm not sure where he's from. Mm. Um, but it's Paolo. Paolo. Uh, a really fast read and um, makes gives you a lot of things to think about. Hmm. Well, that's definitely on my TBR. Um, I was really happy to see that Tales of the City by Armistead Maupin was on, on here because I love that series. I have not read that. It's amazing. It's very, it's gay. It's set in San Francisco and it was originally a serial novel in magazines. Oh, nice. Stuff. Um, yeah, it's, it's lovely. But I was not pleased to see that it was beaten out by the motherfucking Twilight Saga at number 73. I actually am kind of surprised how low that is on the list. Just be- Me too. Too, because actually. of the power of the fandom. Yep. Um, but I guess because it's been out of print for so long, right, or not out of print, but like 
it's, it's not in the mainstream. Over. Yeah. Yeah. yeah if this had happened like, I don't know what, like eight years ago, I would yeah. be up. There. Oh yeah. yeah. It'd Outlander probably be where Outlander definitely is. wouldn't be. In, yeah. Cause exactly. the show hadn't existed yet. Um, left behind. At oh my God. So I'm, I, I read those. I they were not well written. It was an interesting idea, but much too religious for me. I'm surprised Gone Girl's so low on the list. Gillian Flynn fans are, yeah. she's, she's like the it girl yeah. of like the murder world. And she's only number 78. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, Dean Koontz at 79. I'm not a big Dean Koontz fan, but popularity wise, I have read Watchers and it was okay. Was but it? like, it was, a, I don't like Dean Koontz. I don't, it's very like, um, it is supernatural, but it's like, Everything I've read of his is like hard boiled supernatural. So it's almost like I think you might like it because it's almost like crime fiction yeah. and supernatural fiction. But it's not my jam. So I have this like goal, and I don't have like a real timeline on this, but I really want to read like the most popular book by like all of those authors that you've like never read. Oh, Do you sure. know what I mean? Like Danielle Steele, Dean Koontz. Um, I've never read a John Grisham novel. Oh, you haven't. He's prolific. He is. Uh, He's not for me, but... Somebody, like Patton, or that Patton other... Patton Oswalt. No, okay. but he's funny. There's, like, this other guy that writes a shit ton of books. James Patterson. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. He's um, number 81 with his Alex Cross mysteries. I, I don't know what those are. Is Nora Roberts a person that writes books? Nora Roberts writes yeah. books. Yeah, so, like, uh-huh. all those people, I want to read, like, I need to know, like, what are the best Ooh. books that they wrote, and, and like, I want to only read that one. Uh, you know what I want to read is, um, and it's continuing this idea vc andrews's flowers in yes. the attic because my fam was obsessed <laughs> with that when i was little yeah yes um okay but can we talk about okay 50 shades of gray is number 86 okay and number 87 which is whatever it's fine and then number 87 the only kurt vonnegut because they only pick one is the sirens of titan now yeah. how do you feel about that wait i thought i saw i thought i swore i saw cat's cradle or something else well there's no, well, I don't think so. Okay, it shouldn't be. never mind. I imagine. You, well, that. you may have done. Um, no, I obviously imagine. I always think that Catch Twenty Two is Vonnegut, but it's not. Yeah, I so. I didn't read the Sirens of Titan. I, I mean, not either, but I kind of want to now because I've read it's some the of... only one that made the list. Yeah, well, they're only allowed to have one, but yeah. still, I've read a lot of his other stuff. But I'm like, well, I should read that shit then. Yeah, so it's not his most well known. Uh, not by to me. me. <laughs> yeah, not by me. Um. Um, what's his what uh, slaughterhouse slaughterhouse five, five? yeah mm-hmm. that's probably like his most well known I would think um let me just pull up his because I don't I don't want to sound unintelligent and make a guess and then people be like girl that's not even you're racist all. you're trash do you know this book Americana Mm-mm. it like sounds familiar but I didn't I didn't copy over the authors oh let me see let me see what number is it uh eighty nine. Oh, it's, oh, mm, this is a person. I'm just going to show you their name because I have trouble saying <laughs> their effort. name. But I know their name. Oh. Uh, last name Adichie. Yeah. Uh, I've heard, I've heard their name so much, but I'm just. Chimimanda? Name. Possibly. Maybe. Oh, John Green at number 92. Yeah. Looking for Alaska, really? I know also not the one I would have. Fault in our stars, in. I would think. That's what I would have thought. Yeah. Looking for Alaska was also not as good. And then James Baldwin in at 90, but another country, that's not, I don't think that's what he should be on there for. Um, wait, wait. I'm going to pull up the Vonnegut. Okay. So Cat's Quail, you said earlier, Slaughterhouse 5, we talked about. Um, oh, I guess that is. I'm glad. And oh, who wrote uh, Fahrenheit? 950. 451. 451. 972. Uh, Ray Bradbury. I just confused yeah. those. See, it's a good thing I didn't. It's a good thing I checked because I would have been running my mouth. Wait, was that not on this stupid. list either? Nope. Nope. That's wild. <laughs> I know. That's insane. Wow. There were some choices made by mm-hmm. America. Mm hmm. White Teeth by Zadie Smith got in at number 96. That's, that's I good. didn't read that. I haven't read it, but it's on my TBR and I've heard it's amazing. Um, the, what, 100 Years of Solitude's on here, I don't know where. Uh-huh. Uh, and low. I, I have, did you say slow? Oh, I thought it was low, but no, it's high, actually. I saw it in a while ago. I, um, I have not read it, but I ha- I got a copy at the thrift store, uh-huh. and it's on my, like, things I really, like, I need to read it, because it's good for me, I think. Mm-hmm. And then also I hear it's this, like, wonderful masterpiece of, like, 
trippy fantasy like weird stuff have you read it i'm so sorry i just had a moment where i forgot what book we're talking 100 about. years of solitude oh you know what it is it's magical realism that's and, the words i yes, was looking for it is and and i tried it i'm gonna try it again i kind of think it just wasn't the right narrative because it's about a I'm not going to bullshit. It's like a person's life through, like, time, but, like, sometimes maybe they're, like, a ghost and it's the future, but sometimes it's the past. It just, it wasn't what I was looking for at the moment, but I read about maybe a quarter of it. It was good. Um, I think I have it somewhere. It's going to be one of those books I return to, like, one cold winter night when I want to lose myself. It does seem really good. I just haven't. Like, one of the best things about this list, I think, is that it makes me want to diversify my reading. Yes. Because it's easy to, like... So easy to be like, I'm not going to read that thing. I'm going to just read another like crime thriller Mm. because I know I like crime thrillers, but like maybe I should like mix it up with a hundred years of solitude. You know what I mean? Totally. You know what? I'm sorry if if I seem like I'm not 100% in the moment. It's because I was reading. Yeah, Yeah, I was because I was trying to figure out. So if I was going to put James Baldwin on a list, I would put Go Tell It on the Mountain. Mm -hmm. But the reason why it's not is it's. Well, it says it's a semi-autobiographical novel. I wonder if that made it oh. not fictiony enough to be on the list. That's interesting. Um, that's yeah. But another country, like I, I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't even know what that is. Or or Giovanni's room. That's what should be on here. Is Giovanni's room? Girl. That that is like a queer classic. That's what should be on. Some here. librarian somewhere weeded those out and was like, Probably I so. like this one better. Maybe so. Probably. Another, I don't even see it on here. Oh, another country. Okay. Novel 1962. Oh, it's also queer. Okay. I want to read it. <laughs> set, in, uh, set in Greenwich Village, New York City in late 1950s, portrayed many themes that were taboo at the time of its release, including bisexuality, and 